I've worked with tons of artists and there's one common theme that goes on with the reason that a lot of them get stuck and why you're probably stuck with your music and your music career in general. Here's the deal, if you're not able to consistently release high quality music, you have a problem. By consistently, I would say you should be releasing at least one song every four weeks four to six weeks, give or take. And obviously you wanna be creating content. If you've got the money running ads, performing, doing all the things that you need to do as an artist. The issue that I've seen happen is a lot of artists have trouble releasing quality music, not because they're bad at songwriting, not because they're not great at singing or what they do, whether that's rapping, singing, or songwriting, it's mostly because they, you know, you gotta get the beats from over here, then you gotta go to this studio, then you gotta wait for this person to meet up for a, a recording session, or you gotta wait for them to get your mix back. The mix doesn't sound good. Now you gotta fight with them, blah, 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 all these different things. And it becomes a situation where you are serious about your music. You're a great songwriter. You, you know that you can make it with music, but the issue becomes you're not creating enough quality music at a high enough rate. And so you are kind of in this weird position where you're like, okay, I have a computer at home, maybe I've got a microphone, and I have recorded and I know I can record, I don't know how to mix, I don't know how to master, making beats sounds really scary, I don't know how to play an instrument, and so you're kind of in this crossroad, and so that's what I want to help you with today in this video. We've got a marker and a super dope whiteboard, so I'm gonna really just pretty much talk to you about the three stages of the career trajectory of an artist, right? So let's get started. So pretty much the way that this stuff goes is really simple. First, you kind of start out here, right? Like, and you, you've, you're probably already past this part, but you know, you get to this part where you're like, you know what, I love making music and I wanna make songs. So you start making songs, whether that's getting beats off the internet um, or having a friend make them, whatever. So you're kind of like, you're writing, you're making songs, you're doing your thing, and you kind of get to this first phase, right? You get to stage one, right? Where you're like, okay, I'm putting out songs, I love what I'm doing, but I want to take this thing to the next level. So you start getting some original production, right? So you get original production, you start maybe going to a studio, you start maybe mixing and mastering or getting your stuff professionally done, and you get to this stage two. Stage two is basically the situation where you've got original music out there, right? Whether the beats came from BeatStars or a friend, and you might even have the recording set up now, and you're probably starting to get your stuff professionally mixed and mastered. But here's where a problem comes in. Let me get a different color. So here's where a problem comes in. We got red. So we have a problem, okay? The problem then becomes you're shelling out, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of dollars on production, a lot of money. And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm making these songs. I haven't put out a song in months, maybe even longer because I'm working on music and waiting for my music to come back to me. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars, maybe it's hundreds or thousands, whatever, it's a lot of money. And the song gets finished and you're like, dude, I don't even have enough money at this point to like, now I have to wait to save up money to make a video and I have to wait to save up money to run ads or I have to, there's so much waiting around. Like a year will go by and it's like, you've barely put out any music, you've barely put out content, you've barely run ads. You certainly haven't made any money off your music, you've just spent money. And you just keep thinking, well, this is the grind, this is the grind, this is the grind. And it doesn't have to be the fucking grind. Maybe you're grinding wrong and then guess what happens? Th this is my favorite line. I'm gonna write this down. It's my favorite thing that I hear artists say. You get hit with life. You get hit with life. Whatever the fuck that means, right? Life happens. You get married, you have a kid, you get domesticated, nine to five hits. Life. Which by the way, side tangent, when you fuckers say life happened, that's you making fucking excuses. Cool, end of tangent. So life happens. 
But now you're in life. You, you, you got married or you're engaged or you have a baby or whatever it is. And you're like, look, I need to put food on the table, right? You basically quit. Let me lean back so you can see this. You basically quit. You quit music. You quit for a little bit. And this is literally what most artists do. They have a decision to make and they usually go with this, but you're in, so maybe you're around stage two and you're falling down to stage quit, <laughs> right? And you're like, bro, like, how do I get from this stage two up to this next trajectory? Let me see if I can get a good color. I think, I think this green is a little, oh no, this is good. Up to stage three. Stage three is where you want to be, which is basically full time music, right? How do you do that? What's the key difference between stage two and three? Tons of differences, and I'm not going to be a stranger and, and, and say, skip any of them. Most artists between two and three, they've got the business part figured out. They're getting their music, you know, they're getting their songs heard. There's a marketing aspect that goes on, obviously. But the reason that you went from here to here is because you didn't get the creating music part figured out. You were not consistently creating songs for long enough. Simple as that. Simple as that. You weren't creating enough music. You weren't putting it out. You didn't own the rights. You're shelling out hundreds and thousands of dollars. You couldn't sustain it. So what's the difference between two and three? The difference, and I'm gonna just kind of like highlight it right here. The big difference is they get the music figured out. Music creation. They get the music creation dialed. Okay, now a lot of artists, a lot, most, like Nick D is a great example. He's, you know, figures out a way to kind of get his beats together where he's getting beats cheap or, or whatever it is. And then he's got a mixer who just does it for super cheap. He keeps things really affordable. That's great, that's great. And then he makes tons of content and tons of songs. Not every artist that's the situation. Okay, a lot of the artist situation is they're getting with a producer, they get linked up with somebody and they're able to consistently pump out songs. But most artists, this isn't the case. Most artists, you're in this situation, right? You kind of quit the music grind because it was so frustrating, but you don't want to give up on it. Now you're in a situation where you're like, okay, I love music. I don't want to stop making music. I want to keep music alive, but I don't have this dialed in. Right? I didn't get the music creation process dialed and this is where you're stuck. So you're thinking, okay, what if I produce my own music? What if I make my own beats? What if I record vocals at home, right? What if I mix myself? What if I master my own music? Is that possible? I thought you needed years of experience. Well, let me tell you something. I've worked with tons of artists and have helped them become their own producers in just 90 days without needing to know music theory, without needing expensive equipment, without any prior music production experience. Like I'm talking about, Dude, I'm teaching people to make, you see this thing? I, I don't even teach my clients how to use this. I, I don't even use it. When it comes to making beats, bro, we're literally using the keyboards on our computers. Like, I kid you not. And, and you own the full rights to these instrumentals. Like, they're yours. Like my client, Ryan B, he used to go to beat stars and go to studios and get his songs mixed and mastered professionally. And one of his producers ended up, I won't give the whole story, but one of his producers who he paid over like two grand for, ended up losing the files, losing the hard drive and crapping out and Ryan lost the money and lost the songs. Had no music production experience, like didn't know how to produce at all. Within 90 days has made over 30 instrumentals, produced, wrote, recorded, mixed four songs and already has fully mixed and mastered one of those tracks in the course of 90 days. Devin Christodoulou, not even a hip hop artist. He does folk worship music. He used to spend $1,000 per song to get instrumentalists, studio time, mixing, mastering, putting everything together. $1,000 per song. All he knew how to do was play guitar and record and write music. That's it. Came into the program, 
produced three songs in 90 days. That's $3,000 worth of value in just 90 days. And imagine now for the future, he never has to pay the $1,000. And you know what he told me? He said, you know what's funny, Lee? Now that I'm doing this, a lot of other producers and writers want to collab with me and they aren't charging me because of my actual um, abilities now with music production. Isn't that funny how that works? Those are just two examples. I've coached over 40 artists on how to do this. And so if this sounds like something you're going through, or if this sounds like something interesting to you, all you have to do is click below, go book a call with me. I would love to work with you. I'd love to see if it's a good fit. If it is a good fit, and I'm 100% confident that I can help you, then what I'll do on the call is build you out some higher level strategies, show you what it would look like to partner up and go through my program. If it's not a good fit, that's fine too. At the very least, I'll point you in a different direction. All right, well, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got some value from it and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.